Well, good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, put your hands together and just give God some praise this morning. And while you're doing that, stand on your feet as we sing our opening hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. sound mighty good this morning. Keep standing if you would. Please join me in our church's mission. Welcome, Welcome all into a loving, inclusive faith community, seeking to live out the teachings of Jesus, building on our own rich history, history actively exploring beliefs and assumptions, promoting and justice, justice, peace, and, and spiritual growth. growth. Today we recognize and celebrate the gift of love through family and friends. As we gather together, Lord, make us one. One in you, Christ, as you have called us together in unity. God bless and strengthen our families, friends, and loved ones, that we may exhibit the love you have taught us through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Lord, your life and love shown on Calvary's cross is the ultimate gift of love. Teach us today to forgive, to be patient as you are with us, and to serve in humility and love. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let us worship and celebrate God's incredible love together. You may be seated. Today's reading comes from Jeremiah 
chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolation I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path where they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to them, and Ephraim is my firstborn. And our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Appoint us to sit one at your right and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to appoint, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Instead, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Come on, let's pray with me this morning. O oh, gracious and wise God, we thank you for this gathering on this morning of family and friends, but most of all, we're grateful for your presence among us. Be tangible this morning in all the ways that we know that you can. Bless us, God. You know our secret prayers. You know the things that we have before you. You know the things that we haven't uttered a word to another person. God bless us all the more. Bless those who wanted to be here but could not. Heal the sick, the brokenhearted. God, because we know that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the family...
on, it's time to pass the peace. Get out of the aisle. Find somebody you don't know. Greet them. God bless you. Get out of the aisle. Greet them. God bless you this morning. God bless you. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning as we pass the peace this morning. God bless you. It's good to be in the house. Thank you, family. One more time as we get prepared. Toby. Bless you this morning. You may be seated. God bless you this morning. You may be seated. the announcements I have for you today. Welcome. Welcome friends, welcome families. If it is your first time here, welcome to you. Welcome to all of Rev's family who have come and blessed us this morning, getting us up and moving and feeling the Spirit of God moving in this place. Thank you all. If you haven't been here for a while, if you're here every week, we are so glad to have you all. 
It is amazing to see you all here together. And I would just point out, please, in your bulletins, flip to the back pages, all kinds of flyers of all of the events that we have coming up here. And we hope to see as many of you at those as well. That's all I've got for you today. It is offering time. Please come forward. We take our offering. You come down the center aisle. I'll have the plate. And you exit out the sides and return to your seats. As we start from the back to the front. And the balcony. Come on with this. Praise God. you have given us every resource, every blessing, and we know when we believe in your word that it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over so much that we won't have room enough to keep it. In gracious name of God, amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. We've come to a portion of the service. I would like to call Reverend Antonio Villarreal and his wife Betsy to the front. Amen. Amen. Some of you know that Pastor Tony and Betsy were the pastor here before I got here. And uh, 19 years. I don't know how he made it 19 years. <laughs> got, <laughs> but I wanted, so we are installing him as Pastor Emeritus on today. And so I want to say thank you to you because not only have he's been, you know, preachers are not always kind to each other. And so he has been a friend, someone I could talk to, a mentor. And I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Go with it. 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 I'm in a moment here. Go with it. Um, and so in the church wanted to say thank you for your 19 years of service. And Betsy... We know that ministry is not done alone. <laughs> Amen. Ministry is not done alone. Over 19 years, you all have lived, loved, and cried. A lot of life was lived over 19 years. And so we, wanna, we want to honor you as well. So, Tony, we have this. Honor you as Pastor Emeritus. Let's show it to the people. So we get a good
Rick told me to tell you that your name will eventually be down on that plaque downstairs. It's, at, it's, it's actually at the engravers. <laughs> Finally, you'll be... The end date is not there. So, God bless you. And for Betsy, we got something for you too. Amen. Amen. Come on, we give him a hand one more time. God bless you too. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you, Villarreal family. Can, let's give it Villarreal family a hand back there indeed. God bless you. Thank you. Our scripture for the morning. If we could, we can read it together. Is that all right? Yes. Yes. Amen. And then it, it says this. Then his mother and his brother, standing outside, they sent him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whosoever God is the brother, sister, and mother. You may be seated. Lord, you have to help me now. Pray your spirit is here but settles on your people. Pray now that the words you have given to me will take root in the hearts and the minds of your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 And if I were this message it is we are family now when did you hear me say every week you're going to have to talk back to me alright when did you going to have to talk back to me alright just making sure we're all on the, this, the same page I, I've been thinking and reflecting on about family for several weeks in anticipation of this moment my my heart is particularly tender around those who have gone on and joined the great cloud of ancestors, particularly reminiscing, I've been thinking about my mom, my dad, my uncle, my grandmother, and just recently, my Aunt Shirley. I don't mention it because of sadness. I bring it up because I'm grateful. I'm blessed beyond words because each of them had a profound impact on the man who stands before you this morning. I'm sure as we take time today to celebrate our family, you are remembering those who are in the very presence of the Lord who await our return through heaven's portal. I'm reminded as Moses and the Israelites prepared to cross the Red Sea with the Egyptian army close behind them, God reminded Moses not to forget the bones of Joseph taking his remains out of Egypt with them. It's a reminder to us as we keep living and entering new and exciting times, places and spaces, don't fail to remember those who lived, walked and cried and laughed and loved and prayed for us and helped shape us. In our text this morning for our consideration and thinking, Jesus was back in one of his go-to places, the city of Capernaum, where he had performed quite a bit of miracles, where the crowds had been so intense that in one instance they had torn a hole in the owner of the, of the house's roof to get him. As you know, I'm sure my Bible readers remember, there was, there was so many people, the friends of the man who was crippled lifted his bed up on the roof and proceeded to cut a hole in it to get the man that needed to be healed in front of Jesus. 
Now the truth is, I'm not sure how to react putting a hole in my roof, even if Jesus was sitting in my living room eating cheese and crackers. I'm sure it would be on the spectrum of side eye to, wait, what just happened? Um, to, who's going to pay for this? Even with Jesus in the living room. But here now, far bigger crowds have come and uh, attracted by his miracles and his words, no one ever spoke like Jesus. No one, no one ever moved the hearts like Jesus. And certainly, no one ever moved the crowd like Jesus. So they were pressing in on him. It was tight and thick in that house. This gathering of wall to wall people was an eclectic mix. At the center were the fresh off the streets, newly chosen apostles. The 12 who were smitten and enamored, hanging on to every word that was uttered by the, uh, from the lips of their new rabbi. Besides their eager and fascinated, fascinated faces, there lurking in the press of people were scribes, were the scribes scrutinizing every word Jesus was speaking, looking for a, see I told you he was up to no good moment. They had just accused Jesus of being in cahoots with Satan. Some in the crowd were eager, some hysteric, some unsure, some perplexed, some livid, outright mad at the guy who's turning the world as they understood it upside down. Every extreme of humanity was on display, the national zealots to the collaborating tax collectors from the unlearned fishermen to the trained intellectual. And on the periphery, on the outside of this growing mass of people trying to get in as close to Jesus as they could, standing by anxiously was Jesus' family. The text says, then his mother and his brothers came standing outside, sent to him. A crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. Unknown to the crowd, Jesus' mother and his younger brothers hoped to get in so they could privately convince him to come back to Nazareth, where he could be protected from the chaos and those and some who meant harm to Jesus. As the message was passed from person to person, when it reached Jesus, some in the crowd knew the nature of the request and expected Jesus to leave. But what they were not ready for was his unexpected, unexpected and unsettling reply. Who are my mother and my brothers? And then looking around at those who sat there, he gave them a searching look. Matthew adds that he gestured with his hand and he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. That should give us a little pause. I can imagine my own mother answering that question. She would be like, I'm his mother and he knows exactly who I am. Let me free. <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean to be to be family? Based on this text, Jesus would words would have been jarring in any culture, but in the Hebrew culture where family was so sacred, his words were shocking. The crowd must have looked perplexed, as if to say, he said what? Mary, whose life was in great peril because she was the mother of the Messiah, the one whose Isaiah said the government should be on his shoulders, the incoming king of the Jews, the woman, this woman, his mother, who had nursed him, wiped his butt, washed his clothes, made sure he was safe and had plenty to eat, and loved him all the way into adulthood was there with her motherly concern and maybe somewhat annoyed because she had to stop what she was doing to come see about her son because the word on the street was that he had lost his mind. She must have been crushed when she heard his words. His brothers must have been shocked and maybe even angry. And even though we today have the advantage of the biblical perspective, as parents and brothers and sisters, we may still find the words difficult. This is one of Jesus' hard sayings. What did he mean by this off-putting answer, seemingly? First, he didn't mean that severing family ties. As a matter of fact, in his final hours, while he hung on the cross, he thought of his mother and made provision for her. Later, his brother James would become the, the, the pastor of the Jerusalem church and a martyr. Jesus held family in high esteem, so much so that he set the record straight about those who failed to give honor to their parents. And so he was not suggesting that breaking up family ties 
What he meant was there's a deeper relationship, a kinship, a tie greater than flesh and blood. There's a spiritual relationship that is characterized by trusting in and leaning on and following the lead of the God the Father. That's why he said, whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Yeah. Obedience, trusting in, leaning on, following God does not originate a relationship with God. Faith does that, but trusting and leaning on and sticking with God is a sign of that faith. Jesus was saying, in essence, that there is a family, a deeper family, that has deeper and far more lasting ties than our human family. It's an eternal family. Its ties are stronger. It can be more satisfying, more demanding. And those who are in the family are focused on the collaborative or combined work we do together to model the gospel. Love our neighbor as ourselves. Grow spiritually and build up the communities God has planted us in. Christ was trying to convey to us that we are in this together. Where one might be strong, someone else may be weak. We are not alone. We are de- what we're dealing with can turn into a testimony that will help someone get to the other side of going through. Early in his ministry, Jesus told his followers, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and complete his work. And in the garden of Gethsemane, in a bloody sweat, he cried to God, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Every beat of his heart was giving to performing his Father's will. It takes trust and willingness to lean on and the willingness to stay with God and stick with God to say what he said. That's what he did for us. The family of God. We are the children of God. The sweetness of being in God's family is fully realized when we learn to trust and have confidence in the keeper of our souls. It's why the Lord's Prayer, Jesus told us, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we trust, we open our hearts to the fullness of being in the family of God. And if we can learn to lean on the Lord's everlasting arms. When we can make God's will our will, we experience the goodness of relationship with everyone else who's living and learning and leaning on the Lord. Now, I know that some of you all are thinking, well, that sounds good in theory, but in reality, there's always a but. Listen, anyone who's been walking with Jesus any length of time knows it doesn't take long to realize following God can be hard. For a good portion of us, the hardest thing is to give in and God, let God order our steps. It's hard not to lean to your own understanding. Like Burger King, we want it our way. It's hard to trust when our backs are against the wall and there's no logical way out. We can get weak and shaky when we're bombarded daily with bad news, negativity, signs that we are all about to fall off the cliff. People telling us we aren't going to make it either by the words or looks that say you're a fool to think God is going to make a way. Get your head out of the clouds. It's hard to walk when you can't see the road ahead. It's hard to trust God to guide the steps of your children. When you see them going wrong, you just want to jump in and shake some sense into it. It's been my experience. God doesn't step in right away. God waits until all our energy is gone. Wait till you feel like you can't go another day until you can't see how you're going to make it out. And then God shows up only like God can. Not with an answer, but with grace. And when he shows up with his grace, we're able to stand to our feet once more. I'm a witness that, 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 that God shows up with grace just to keep going, what doing what you're doing, not sure where the strength is coming from. When God shows up with his grace, you don't care who's doing what or not doing what. You just keep doing what you're doing and you know what it's right to do. And God shows up in the situation, all of a sudden, light begins to break through the darkness. I know I have some folks who know what it means to be under a heavy burden. And God showed up. The problem may linger, but you have strength to go on a little further. (laughs) Being our families are precious to us. We love getting together and to catch up and remind ourselves of the bond of love and family we share. It's a comfortable love. It fits like an old slipper, yet despite love of family, 
We have to acknowledge that family in and out of the church can be complicated. Truth is, being in any relationship can be complicated, especially one centered on church and family. Whether it's because where you come from, home, social environment, mental health challenges, the truth is, there are things we have experienced that have scarred us. There are things we have happened on this journey that have left a stain on our brain. I preach into the right congregation. There is some stuff buried beneath our good looks, hidden under the facade of having it all together. There are insecurities, fears, issues that still linger. New clothes but broken underneath. Big smile in church but depressed at home. We have, we have become Oscar-worthy performers, mastered the art of masking and putting on the show to protect our hearts. If I can be real with your family, the church for some of us is the site of our pain and trauma that left some of our living lives spinning out of control. Our relationship with church, family, and God is a complicated one. Some in the midst of tragedy, tragedy was left to choke on their own grief and manage it alone. There, while working for the good of the church and community, somebody opened their mouth, said something dumb they had no business saying. Their words left us wounded and struggling. But yet, family, and still, through all of this complicated stuff we call life, God is calling us to be family. Yes. Mills, you don't know my story. You don't know what they did to me. How can I do this? I don't even know where they begin. Let me give you something my grandmother, the late Reverend Darcy Virginia Mills, told me. Begin with love and end with love. Yes. Beloved, I'm convinced. I'm almost done. I'm convinced if we love Jesus, we can learn to love ourselves. If we love Jesus, you can learn to love your spouse the right way. If you love Jesus, we will be compelled and convinced and convicted to mend broken relationships. If you love Jesus, you will not only love your children, but all of God's children, even if they don't look like you, worship like you, love like you, or vote like you. 2000. Years ago, when Jesus gave this startling answer, he shocked his mother, brothers, and sisters, and all that heard him. The shock waves have reverted down through the years and centuries. Our souls look back and wonder. It should teach us that when we learn to lean on, trust him, have faith in the one who looked through the portals of time and saw each one of us in our needs, we enjoy the blessed sense of being family. Jesus is our example of this love. He loved his father and all of us all, all the way to Calvary. He willingly donned the robe of humanity, experienced the pangs of hunger, suffered trauma, endured the agony of loneliness, and faced the struggle of poverty. It is Jesus who unveils to us the glory of God's goodness, the glory of God's grace, the glory of God's love, the glory of God's forgiveness, the glory of God's faithfulness, and the glory of God's promises that are yes and amen. Yes. To all of God's children, at the end of the day, we are family. Amen. God bless you. Okay, we're going to do something a little different that you're not used to. We're praying for those on our prayer list. We're praying for you. All of us, we are family. I don't want you to forget that. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to find a partner. Find somebody you can dance with. Find somebody you can dance with. All right? And we're going to dismiss. As soon as I dismiss, and Matt, you hit it, okay? Gracious God, we thank you for this coming together. We thank you for our lives and our family and our friends. God, we thank you for this church. It's your leadership. God, we bless you that we are family. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us, each and every one. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hit it, Matt. Turn it up, Matt. Turn it up. Come on, you are dismissed. Let's dance out together. We are family. Come on, dance, y'all.
Fellowship Hall. Don't leave, don't leave. We have food down in Fellowship Hall. The food is already blessed. I'll be down in a minute to get out of these clothes, and I'll see you in a minute.